I'm Dr. Lauren Gerson, Senior Associate Editor for Gastrointestinal Endoscopy, and it's my pleasure to be interviewing um, Dr. Rupert Leong today, who is from Sydney, and we're going to be discussing his paper published in GIE entitled, Knowledge and Predictors of Dysplasia Surveillance Performance in Inflammatory Bowel Diseases in Australia. So as we all know, ulcerative colitis is a chronic disorder that is associated with a risk of colon cancer, particularly after several years of disease, and gastroenterologists are advised to survey their patients on regular intervals for the development of dysplasia and cancer. Hmm. So the first question for you is, can you describe current issues and barriers with uh, surveillance um, among gastroenterologists for these patients? Um, I guess uh, we base our uh, concepts on the previous publications uh, in the last two decades from um, other countries, so uh, United Kingdom, United States, uh, New Zealand and uh, Netherlands have demonstrated overall low adherence and quite variable knowledge about uh, surveillance strategies in IBD. So we, that was our initial concept was that uh, the, the adherence rates would be quite low in Australia. Um, in addition, we didn't know whether non-gastroenterologists and endoscopists would uh, have different levels of knowledge or, or performance, so we wanted to look at surgeons as well in our survey, and uh, we also wanted to see if knowledge was a predictor of uh, behaviour. So we were very keen to develop a knowledge score to develop this as a quality uh, measure to see if that was a predictor for uh, adherence to uh, guidelines. Great. So the, what was the main hypothesis of your study? Yeah, we, we assumed that the overall adherence rates to guidelines would be low, and uh, that uh, uh, was uh, the, the start of the research um, and the basis to develop quality improvement indicators so we can actually improve the uh, surveillance strategies for IBD patients. So we thought that uh, colorectal surgeons would perhaps have a lower level of knowledge as well, and uh, that's uh, probably through the lack of opportunities to attend conferences as, as we, we do. Um, and uh, we want to see if they need to um, uh, upskill, up knowledge, uh, and develop, um, excuse me, uh, uh, education program that's uh, more convenient for them or more uh, appropriate to their environments. So tell us a little bit about your survey. Was it a survey that you developed specifically? Did you go through validation of the survey? And how do, patient, how do people fill it out? Is it a computer survey, paper survey, so forth? Yeah, we initially developed a, a knowledge score that was based on the AGA guidelines from 2010, and there were 18 items, and we developed a composite linear scale. So we validated that based on uh, constructs and uh, discriminant validity mm -hmm. and uh, a principal component analysis afterwards to look at the various domains and variances. The survey was a paper-based survey and we uh, distributed that to uh, gastroenterologists and colorectal surgeons uh, who are members of the respective societies and received about a 50% overall return rate, which was respectable, I think. Um, and uh, the surveys uh, returned to us and we were able to statistically analyze that according to standard uh, methods. So traditionally, at least when I've done surveys, I mean, it's been very difficult to get people to participate. So how did you get such a robust uh, participation rate? Or maybe physicians in Australia are just more enthusiastic about answering surveys. We are quite <laughs> enthusiastic. Um, I think uh, we, were, we had a very good um, uh, uh, trainee with us, and uh, he attended to the various meetings and conferences, especially the, the nation, national conference. Um, and uh, we also got the college to help out as well and distribute the surveys. So the, I think it did reach most of the gastroenterologists practicing gastroenterologists and the ones that returned it were probably the mo more motivated ones. Um, and uh, we uh, kept on doing it until we got respectable numbers uh, before uh, analyzing the data. So what is, what, roughly what's the number of gastroenterologists in Australia and colorectal surgeons who would be candidates for this survey? Yeah, so uh, we sent our survey to um, probably over 400 gastroenterologists. The, uh, uh, some of these are obviously not uh, endoscopists, they may be more researchers or hepatologists that don't do IBD uh, surveillance procedures. And uh, also colorectal surgeons, um, some may not see a lot of IBD patients preferring to operate on uh, cancer cases. So uh, we had about uh, 53 uh, colorectal surgeons re respond and uh, about 264 gastroenterologists. So let's talk about some of the main results. What did you find? Um, was it different than what you expected? And particularly with regards to you know, disp dysplasia surveillance. Yeah, so we were a bit surprised because uh, the overall knowledge and uh, adherence to guidelines were quite high. 
So uh, that uh, was quite different to the previous surveys conducted in other countries in the previous two decades. So, so whether there was uh, effects of time um, changing uh, their practice, uh, um, and also I think in the last two decades there have been quite, uh, quite distinctive changes as well. We've got a better understanding of the natural history of dysplasia, and so we've got better imaging techniques to find these dysplastic lesions. And I think Australians are quite up to date with this. So there were four main changes, I think, over the previous uh, surveys, and that included uh, increased use of uh, imaging techniques. Um, most of this uh, was uh, NBI, with only one in four uh, performing chromoendoscopy. Um, we also identified that um, the gastroenterologists were more likely to uh, have a uh, restratified uh, interval, surveillance interval, so based on the previous um, findings on previous surveillance procedures. And so there's less likelihood of uh, automatically going to what's colectomy. Um, and uh, there's um, greater emphasis on performing endotherapy, either just polypectomy or uh, endoscopic mucosal resection of any dysplasia found. The overall knowledge was high of gastroenterologists compared to colorectal surgeons, and we found that not the knowledge score did predict for adherence to guidelines and better overall um, performance. And did you look at whether this had changed outcomes? So in other words, whether there are fewer patients developing cancer? No, that, this is a purely a survey of uh, the knowledge and performance, and uh, we don't have the longitudinal effects of uh, the, uh, the downstream effects of uh, the surveillance procedures. And were there any major weaknesses of your study? I guess a response bias is always possible, where mo more motivated people are more likely to respond. Uh, but that would be the same uh, criticism for all the previous studies from the other countries that did demonstrate a lower uh, adherence uh, rates to guidelines. So uh, I think um, as such uh, we had a, quite a good uh, response rate, I, I thought, and I think um, the results are, do indicate improvements over the last two decades which I guess is not surprising because uh, we've had a lot of uh, uh, presentations and uh, new research that have uh, updated many of us. So, uh, yeah, so I think uh, Australians overall had a, quite a high uh, rates of, uh, uh, for example, um, uh, surveying patients with Crohn's colitis and uh, in the previous surveys that, that was quite low, but we now understand that uh, they are at risk of uh, developing dysplasia as well. So I think Australians have done quite well in these uh, sort of... Um, uh, specific indications. So are you going to use this data moving forward at all to change practice in Australia or educate certain gastroenterologists? Yeah, we're hoping that uh, we've validated at least this knowledge score as a possible uh, tool that can be used to audit uh, other individuals or departments to demonstrate uh, uh, good uh, performance of uh, surveillance. Um, I think uh, guidelines can be developed uh, around this as well. I would like to see uh, audits uh, to be um, more formally done as well by individuals and departments to indicate that they have uh, good performance uh, characteristics. And maybe it also means that gastroenterologists should lead the surveillance um, over surgeons and so uh, collaboratively uh, have uh, uh, gastroenterologists who deal more with IBD perhaps do uh, the chrome endoscopies and these sort of procedures. So um, do you think, um, I guess based on this study that, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, it sounds like you'll be changing kind of the, the way that surveillance is done in Australia or trying to target those patients towards physicians who are more motivated to perform surveillance. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think chrome endoscopy still needs to be improved upon. I think uh, the, the latest scenic uh, consensus statements uh, indicate that that's uh, the best uh, uh, tool that we can use to find dysplasia. So I'd like to see that uh, being done more. And there's also a high reliance on NBI at the moment uh, amongst our respondents, and over 50% use NBI where there are very little data to support its advantage. So perhaps uh, more research needs to be done uh, on NBI and uh, greater training um, and um, support through perhaps funding for chrome endoscopies required. And are there any other findings that you'd like to discuss from the study that you'd like to highlight for the audience? Um, any ones you're thinking of in particular? Or <laughs> no, just wanted to make sure we touched all the important points. No, I think, I think that that's about it. I think um, uh, that there has been changed. Overall, there's a high knowledge and good performance. Um, gastroenterologists uh, had uh, better uh, results than colorectal surgeons. And I think the imaging techniques uh, needs to be uh, refined more. And I think that um, 
chrome endoscopy in particular needs to be emphasized a bit more. Yeah. Dr. Leong, thanks so much for sharing your important insight in the paper and giving us the uh, findings, and you can find this uh, paper in the journal. Thanks very much. Thanks.